All right, so welcome to Rehab United. We are talking about orthotics uh, in this video, and I want to kind of give you an overall assessment of what we're doing, kind of give you an idea of how we go about assessing the foot for an orthotic, and then take you through that process. So we always obviously get someone barefoot. This is Sam, she's gonna help us out today. And then we do an assessment both non-weight bearing and weight bearing. So it's really vital to look at the foot in a non-weight bearing position uh, to see if it has structural deformities. Once we determine that, we'll also look at the response or the compensations that occur once the foot's on the ground. So um, one of the things I do first, just get assessment going. I'm really kind of just feeling is the foot loose, rigid, what's the big toe like? It gives me an idea of kind of what her foot naturally does. So one of the first things we do is look at one of the major joints, the rear foot, and that's essentially the calcaneus or heel with the talus underneath. And we're looking at what that mobility looks like. So we have the medial bone, the lateral bone, which is tib and fib, and we're looking whether or not that heel is moving properly. As well as we're looking at the mid-tarsal joints, which is tailor navicular joint and calcaneal cuboid joints, and we're seeing what kind of motion is going on there. Finally, we're coming down to the forefoot, and we're working on whether or not that big toe is moving the way we want it to. So I'm gonna have you flip over, Sam. So now we have the client laying on our stomach, and what's great about that is it gives me a chance, and our therapist a chance, to really look at the foot and determine neutral. So neutral is what the heel position is when the talus is between the mortise, so the two bones here. So one of the things I notice right away when I put Sam in that neutral position is she's in a varus position. It's something we're trying to determine. So we're looking at that varus position of the heel. That gives me some information I'm gonna use later. As well as I wanna see the global positioning of her heel, which is in an everted position, what happens at her foot. And you'll notice lots of motion there. Once I take the heel in, inver in, in an inverted position, this is the locked up position of the foot. So that when the foot pushes off and we propel ourselves, the problem here is you'll notice is she doesn't lock up. So we have a hypermobile uh, mid tarsal or a hypermobile joint when we should get it stable and it's not stable for her. So that tells me right away we're going to have some issues when we stand up with control uh, up the chain whether or not that tr uh, translates into the tibia moving too fast or knee pain or hip pain. Sam actually has an ACL tear. So the question is, does her foot have influence on her knee? Absolutely it does. Was that the result of a tear or not? Not sure, but it might be an influence. So we're gonna definitely assess that. Last thing why we're in this position is we're looking down the foot and we're looking at whether or not there's a varus. And you'll see that her forefoot actually is rotated up. And that's just called a varus. And typically it's a response or a compensation to this heel position where the ground is pushing the foot out because the heel is so collapsed. And we'll see that in a second. So I look at that foot, look at that position as well as I'm assessing what kind of motion's going on at that big toe. Is it flexible? Does it have range that we need? She's fortunate enough to have good extension. She lacks a little bit of flexion. But one of the big things we see is her big toe drops. And the reason that big toe drops here, you'll see it kind of comes out, is because she's trying to get her foot flat on the ground. And one of the things we always want to do is have our heel down and our forefoot down. So she's doing that to compensate. And we'll show you that in a non or in a weight bearing position. As discussed earlier, it is vital to look at a non-weight bearing foot, assess what its reaction is in a weight bearing position. So when Sam's standing there, first and foremost, I'm gonna look at her arch position. If you look there, sometimes we have a flat foot, real flat, you'll see her arch is actually up. It's not really high, but a medium arch. And what that tells me is her heel, when it drops, her midfoot can't necessarily get further down the chain. The next thing I'm gonna look at is what kind of big toe motion we have. And you'll notice she's so collapsed in this uh, front of the foot that her big toe doesn't come up a lot. We would like to see it actually come off the floor a lot. So if I bring her arch up, and kind of put her in a neutral position, you'll see that big toe actually starts to move. As well as I'm assessing where the talus position is. So we look at what neutral position is, and right now her bone is all the way down and in. You can kind of see that collapse of her foot. We actually want that foot to be up in this neutral position. You'll see now it's maintained that arch, and I have a more neutral position. So 
that just gives me an overall assessment there. So it gives me a, a, a sense of what I'm looking at and what I need to go after. So let's go ahead and turn around. So now we're looking at what the rear foot position is. And if you look, we're looking for an alignment between the middle of this bone or the middle of the calf line, right at the Achilles tendon, and then the heel. And what you'll see is this angle. And that angle is what we call an everted position, which just means that the heel is collapsed. It happens on both feet. Seems to maybe be a little bit more on a right foot. Um, but both heels are in that position. The next thing I'm going to ask Sam to do is kind of roll her feet flat and then open them up. And so we call this pronation supination. And really I'm kind of seeing, does that foot start to change? Will it tolerate more motion? And then Sam, go ahead and just squat for me. And when she squats, you'll notice the heel drops more. So do that again. She's actually going a little bit further into the range. Uh, come narrower a little bit. And then don't squat as low, but go ahead and squat. We just get that collapse. We call that more eversion. So she's able to go a little bit further. Go ahead and turn around and do the same thing. So that squat position is showing us that she wants to collapse even more. And you can see that the joint itself is going down and in. As you work yourself up the chain, look at her knees, you'll see that knee want to dive in a little bit. Go ahead and pop. Okay, finally, one of the things we're looking at is alignment of the hip relative to the knee relative to the foot. As you see that foot collapse down and in at the subtalar joint, you come up the chain and you're going to see that kneecap is actually pointing in. So you're seeing this rotation, and that's my concern is that this tibia, as a response to the, heart, the arch that's rigid, her shin bone is going to rapidly rotate. That's going to put stress on the knee and up the chain. When I have her look over her right shoulder and rotate out, you're going to see her start to get in a neutral position, and you'll see that knee aligns. And this is what we're going to recreate. So go ahead and look straight ahead. We're going to recreate that position with an orthotic. So now we can keep the foot in line with the knee and in line with the hip, and our risk is going to drop. Because really, an orthotic is used for either controlling the foot or it's used to facilitate stability in the foot. We want to make sure we get the right alignment, and once we have that right alignment, now all the other musculature up the chain can work more effectively.